glad to have you. I have been known to get on social media, and I remember a few day, not too long ago, there was a fellow who, shall we say, was not the biggest Christian in the world, if at all, and he posted something about the trying to illustrate the illegitimacy or the hypocrisy of so-called conservative Christians. And it was, I looked at the meme, and it was actually made by an atheist group, so I'm not expecting it to be, shall we say, pro-Christian. But it was quoting or paraphrasing Matthew 25 to help certain people. But it was hinting that the conservative Christians didn't do this. Is it all correct? And I would say probably partially. Not everyone who is, shall we say, externally a Christian does this. Do, not everybody does what they're supposed to do. And that's reality. But I replied to the posting and I said, this would make a good sermon. And I... Here I am. Now we'll see if I'm right. Ka, ta, ta, the, the title of this lesson is Well Doing. We'll go to Matthew 25, beginning in verse 31, we'll read. And Jesus says, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. So Jesus will come again. All nations are going to be judged, the righteous and the unrighteous alike. He will separate the sheep from the goats, the good and the evil. And verse 34, he says, you know, come you blessed. And it says in, in verse 35 through 40, for I was a hunger and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in, naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say, say I, I say unto you, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. In other words, the reward is being described here. And the, and the righteous are rewarded. And they're going to say, well, when did we see you in all these bad situations? We need to be like those that Jesus described. Jesus wants us to help all people in the, any way we can. And we, it's not, you know, we do it to the lowest of the low and the highest of the high and everybody in between. Jesus set, sees it as he came to do it. You know, we do it for them, we do it for him. And that's something we have to realize. When we do well, well doing, we are doing it for people, but by doing it for the creation of God, Jesus, we are doing it for them as well. Verses 41 through 46 of Matthew 25, it says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hungered, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you took me not in. Naked, and you clothed me not. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. Then shall they also answer me, him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? 
Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not to one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous un into life eternal. In other words, if we are not doing what is good, you know, People will not get the, you know, if we're not helping others, we're not going to get the reward. You know, consider in the Proverbs, in Proverbs 14, beginning with verse 27. Verse 27, it says, The life of the Lord is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death. In the multitude of people is the king's honor, but in the, but in the want of people is the destruction of the prince. He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding, but he that is hasty of spirit exalteth folly. A sound heart is the life of the flesh, but envy the rottenness of the bones. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his maker, but he that honoreth him hath mercy on the poor. The wicked is driven away in his wickedness, but the righteous hath hope in his death. Wisdom resteth in the heart of him that hath understanding, but that which is in the midst of fools is made known. Righteousness exalteth a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. The king's favor is toward a wise servant, but his wrath is against him that causeth shame. In other words, we need to do righteousness to do what is good for others. We need to put away selfishness. And that's something that a lot of people forget. There are a lot of people who are doing things for themselves and only themselves, you know. Sometimes I think the motto of this country should not be e pluribus unum, it should be what's in it for me. A lot of people have this attitude that this is the way I, sh I should be functioning. And yes, we want to go to heaven. We want to re be rewarded for our, what we do, but we need to have the attitude of a servant of God. James, the third chapter in verse 13, who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation, in other words, a good conduct, his works with meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace." We do the things that make peace. There are people who are going to be hostile to God and to his servants. And that's, as I said before, it's reality. But we don't have to let ourselves be affected that way. We can get our, do ourselves the righteousness and help others so that they might have a home in heaven. Galatians 6 and verse 1, it says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault... You which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. But let every man prove his own work, and then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone, and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden." Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh, so of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not, as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. In other words, not to falter from it, not to, you know, just basically not get tired of doing what is righteous, to do well. And a lot of people saying, well, we can do this. No, this is a command for the individual. 
that we do the things to help others. And people are saying, well, what is that? And I said, that's everything. Everything. You know, do we find well-doing to be a weariness? Oh, do I have to do that again? I, I hear people saying that. Well, do I have to go to church again? Or people are saying, you go to church three times a week? What kind of freak are you? Isn't once enough? I, I get sick of that. And, you know... We are to be this way every day. Even, even when the church doors are not open, we need to follow the ways and do well to help others. In Malachi 1, in verse 6, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If, then, if I then, then I be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, where is my fear, saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name, and you say, Wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar, and you say, Wherein have we polluted thee? In that you say, The table of the Lord is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts? And now I pray you, beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This, has been, this hath been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Who is there even among you that would shut the doors for naught? Neither do you kindle fire on my altar for naught. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name, and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. But you have profaned it, in that you say, The table of the Lord is polluted, and the fruit thereof, even his meat, is contemptible. You said also, Behold, what a weariness is it, and you have snuffed at it, saith the Lord of hosts, and you brought that which was torn, and the lame, and the sick. Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? But cursed be the deceiver which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. Now, if you're going to invite someone important to your house or you get a message saying the president is coming to dine are you going to give him rotten bananas yum yum okay because jeff's here it's trump <laughs> trump comes to your house are you going to give him the spoiled meat no you're going to give him your best Whoever is there. You know, at normal, when I grew up, we would take, everybody would take turns hosting the preachers that came on certain Sundays. It was Paul Peck, and then later his son Clyde, and most of the time it was Brother Walker and Brother Poor. And my mother, six months before, either one would set foot in the house. We've got to make this house presentable for Brother Poor, or Brother Walker, or both. So we'd have to paint the house. We'd have to make certain everything looked just right for the few hours they were going to spend in our living room, in our kitchen, and say nothing. But my mother wanted to make certain the place was presentable for these fine men. I never heard Brother Walker or Brother Poor ever say, have you painted this place lately? I see you've dusted. You know, I'm not saying that my mother didn't dust, but I'm going to tell you, she really dusted six months before Brother Poor came. And, and we're doing God's word. Is a weariness to do this? Is it an exhaustion to you? Is it an exhaustion to me to do these things? And you know what? We need to do it to be happy and say, this is what fulfills us. 
How many people have said, I don't know what this life is. What is the meaning of life? What is, is it worth doing all these things? And you know what? We want God to be happy with us. Because God will know if we've prepared or not. 2 Corinthians 11, you know, we're not promised easiness for doing well. And I think that's a fascinating thing to say. You know, in verse 20, you know, Paul says, if you suffer, if a man bring you into bondage, if a man devour you, if a man take of you, if a man exalt himself, if a ma man smite you on the face, I speak as concerning reproach, as though we had been weak. Howbeit, whereinsoever any is bold, I speak foolishly, I am bold also. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. In labors more abundant, in stripes above measure, in prisons more frequent, in deaths oft. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once I was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep, in journeyings often, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness, beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? I must needs glory. I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. In Damascus, the governor under Aretas the king kept the city of the Damascus with a garrison, desirous to apprehend me. And through a window in a basket was I let down by the wall and escaped his hands. In other words, we may not have great luxuries and we may not even have a peaceful life because we serve God. But we need to have the attitude of being a happy warrior you ever meet people like that? They're always in tumult because of their principles, but they're always happy because they know there's going to be a reward. And that's the attitude we need to have in our life. We're going to have to be happy knowing that there is a war out there. You know, we sing onward Christian soldiers. That's what we are. But we need to be happy because we have the reward awaiting us, knowing Eh, we can handle this. We can handle a few years of this. Of course, how much are a few years? Well, if you live 100 years, it's not that long. You ever ask someone who turns 100? They're saying, so, what do, you, what do you think? And they said, I can't believe I'm 100 this soon. You know, we also have to realize that. 1 Peter 3 and verse 17. Verse 17, it says... For it is better that if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. That makes sense. You don't want to be saying, well, I want to serve God, but you get punished because you did bad. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, which sometime were disobedient, when once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah, while the part while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. First Peter four and verse twelve. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice inasmuch as you were are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is, he is glorified. But let none of you suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian... Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Serving the Lord is better than comfort. 
Serving the Lord is better than even earthly happiness. We may be going through hard times. Maybe we have before. Maybe we will again. Maybe just life seems to be one big soap opera. I don't know. But we need to put others first because we put God first. So what are different ways to do well? You know, that's a good question. What is doing well? Well, Luke, the 10th chapter, we can see a little bit about that. Luke 10 and verse 25 for what is a man advantaged if he, well, we'll go to chapter 10. I gave, when, it, when the preacher gives you the wrong verse, we call that a bonus verse. It doesn't add anything, but as you can just say, you got a bonus. Verse 25 in Luke 10, it says, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? How readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy strength, and with all thy mind, and thy neighbor as thyself. And he said to him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. But he, willing to justify himself, said to Jesus, Who is my neighbor? Define neighbor. So Jesus answers him. And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jericho, Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, who stripped him of his raiment and wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion on him and went to him. And bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine, and set him on his own beast, and brought him to an inn, and took care of him. And on the morrow, when he departed, he took out two pence, and gave them to the host, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatsoever thou spendest more, when I come again, I will repay thee. Which now these three thinkest thou was neighbor to him that fell among the thieves. And he said, He that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus to him, go and do thou likewise. How many people are the ones who just passed by on the other side? I don't, I don't see them. You ever hear about turning a blind eye? You know where that came from? Lord Horatio Nelson of the British Navy had, was blind in one eye. And they were saying, well, there's a, one of our ships are coming and he would take his telescope to the blind eye and say, I don't see any ship. <laughs> he turned his blind eye to what he didn't want to see. Are we like those people? Or are we like the Samaritan? No matter how low the Samaritan was in the eyes of a Jew, he did what the others should have been doing. We can model our lives in such service to those in need. Maybe it's someone who's got a flat tire on the road. Maybe it's someone that says, I am, I need food. We can do those things. And it's, real, it's, fair, it's pretty easy to do. We want to be a good example to the world. A good example to others on what it means to serve the Lord. Matthew 5 and 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and be trodden under foot of men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. James 4:17. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. We need to be doing those things, to do what is righteous. And some confuse, you know, they talk about scriptural well-doing. You know, those that do not, that collect money in an unscriptural way, you know, as in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 through 2, helping the needy saints, taking, you know, lay by and store on the Lord's day. But, and a lot of people saying, well, what's wrong with that? Okay. 
if you think it's right to give to any religious group that is doing charity work, any group, you know, okay, I've changed my religion. I am now a member of the Church of Satan. And the Church of Satan is going to ask you for money to feed the poor. It's no different than giving to a denomination or, get, or raising the money in a way that is not authorized in the Scripture. Period. Let's do it the right way. We can do these things. To be weary, not to be weary in well-doing is a command to the individual. It does not say it to the congregation. But we can still do good things. Not being weary in well-doing, it's an instruction to each of us. It should be a lifestyle. And I was listening, I've been off, as a lot of people have been off this past week. I was listening to a radio show, and they were talking to this coach who was in some documentary that won an Oscar. Don't remember the guy's name, but he was talking about how he was trying to, he was a football coach, and he was trying to not only make good football players out of these men, he was trying to make these high school students good people, good citizens. And he said about half of them were following it, but the others were not. And he was asking one of those who were acting well, why aren't they following what I'm saying? And they said, they're not sure if you are a turkey person or not a turkey person. And he has to ask the question, what's a turkey person? I don't see anyone walking around with the big feathers or the making a gobbling sound. Basically, they said, these are the people who come around certain times of the year to make themselves feel good and give you turkeys, hams, and chickens, but then do nothing else. They just make themselves feel good. So the time of the year of turkey, they refer to them as turkey persons. They said, we eat their food, but we don't find them to be very sincere because that's the only time you'll see these people around helping. Are we turkey people? A lot of people are. I'll, I'll tell you, if you want to get, if you're lonely, give $1 to any charity out there. They will put you on a list and you'll never be lonely again because they all want your money. And they all, and I, and while I don't mind giving to charity, I don't, I certainly don't mind, you know, giving, laying by in store as I've prospered on Sundays. But you know what? I, it's like the male triples and they all give me the sad story if you give a dollar to alley cat allies they send you they send things to the oh the you know the the cruelty to animals people you know and the dogs look sadder than sad oh are you gonna let fido starve if you don't give us a dollar and if i gave everybody a dollar i wouldn't be able to buy gas to come get bought, laid by in store. But we need to realize the need to have not fake faith, but faith unfeigned. 1 Timothy 1 and verse 5. Now the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some, having swerved, have turned aside unto vain jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, misunderstanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which is, was committed to my trust. Faith unfeigned. In other words, we don't fake it. Are you here because you want someone to think well of you, or are you here to please God? 
faith unfeigned, love unfeigned. It talks about in 1 Corinthians 6. We need to be genuine. If we don't mean it when we do good things, it's just it's no good for us. Do not be weary in well-doing. You know, we start with obeying the gospel, but Revelation 2.10 says to be faithful unto the end. It's part of the race of life. We teach people God's word, in, as in 2 Timothy 4. We make it a lifelong practice, you know, reprove, rebuke, with, you know, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We keep God's commandments, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commandments, said Jesus. In other words, by helping others and doing it in accordance with God's will, Jesus' will. You can do all these great things, but it needs to be done righteously. Isn't that a clever thing of Satan? You can do good things, but it be sin. You know, if you're giving to the church of Satan, you know what? You're, you're, at, you're giving money to the devil to help the devil's work. Why did Jesus not make bread? Why did Jesus tell the Satan, get behind me? Because any association with Satan is sin. We are to have nothing to do with that. And if there's someone out there who is teaching false words, they are the agents of Satan. We need to take a, stay away from that. Do we mean it? Have you become a Christian today? What better time than now, you know? You've, have you heard the word, you know, Romans 10, 17? If you've heard the word, then you have to ask yourself a question. Do I believe this word? I mean, that's a good question. You know, if you're a Christian, it's good that you believe in Christ. He who believeth in this baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Mark 16, 16. You believe, then you have to change your ways. You repent, as in Acts 2, 38. If you've repented, you've changed your ways, then you have to make, you make confession, as in Acts 8. The Ethiopian eunuch said, I believe that Jesus Christ, Son of God, and then he was baptized for the remission of his sins. And we mentioned Rev Revelation 2.10 to be faithful to the end. Are you that, in that situation where you need to become a Christian? What better time than now? But if you've slipped away, serving God is a weariness. Get, let's change that. The invitation applies to you in any fashion. Please make your wants known. Come forward while we stand and while we sing.